Jessica from Art Journal Junction and today I'm going to be working on a page in my journal using the supplies from the Mixed Media Inspired Kit in November. So the first thing I'm doing is peering down a black file folder that comes in the kit with some Wonder Tape. Now Wonder Tape is a discontinued product so I'm just trying to use it up. You really could use any adhesive to put this down. I'm just using whatever was in my stash. And I'm centering it on my page and making sure that the back side of it is completely adhered, but I'm also leaving the top file folder part so that it's able to open and close. Now I'm taking some thicker sticker chipboard letters and I'm putting them down just in any old pattern on my page. Now. I'm not thinking too hard about the letters that I'm choosing, but I am making sure that I pick different shapes and different sizes. So an O next to an M, next to an F, next to a Q, you can see what I'm trying to do. And I'm not, like I say, I'm not thinking too hard about this, but I am placing it in sort of a grid pattern so that I'm rotating the letters and I'm getting lots of different sizes and looks. And what I'm going to do for the placement, just to give you a heads up, is I'm going to start on my page on the left side and then I'm going to look, make it look like the letters are spilling down the page and ending on the bottom right corner. And these letter, chipboard letters are adhesive backed so I'm not adding anything to them I'm just simply placing them on the page as is. And I don't think I mentioned that these are part of the November Mixed Media Inspired Kit as well. I'm just going with this until I kind of feel like I have enough letters and I want it to look like it's spilling out of a bucket. So I'm imagining a bucket on the upper left corner spilling this out. So I'm making sure that it's narrow at the on the upper left side and then as it goes down it kind of widens out a little bit. You don't have to think this in depth into it. You can just place them down. But for me sometimes I just like to imagine what is happening so that it helps me with a visual for placement. So as it gets towards the bottom they get a little more scattered. Now I'm done placing the letters, I'm happy with it, and I'm going to begin putting down my gesso. Now this is Dina Wickley Media Gesso and I'm using the white and the black. And I am making sure that when I'm putting down the gesso with my brush that it's getting around every nook and cranny of those chipboard letters so I'm making sure that I'm rotating my brush and really coating everything. I'm also doing the background so everything in the end will be covered in gesso. Now a lot of people like to ask like what is gesso? What is it for? Do I need it? And the easiest way I found to explain gesso is that gesso works as a primer. So just as you would prime your walls or prep wood or any sort of project that you would do in your home you can also do that in your art journal and in your artwork. Now, because Gesso does work as a primer and preps the page, it's going to make sure that no matter what you're working on, the paint is going to perform the same. So in this case, because we're using the chipboard letters and we're working on paper, by coating it all with Gesso, the paint will look the same on everything. And now I'm switching to black Gesso. But it all works the same, black gesso, white gesso. There's also clear gesso, so if you're working on book paper or something where you don't want the background to be obscured, but you want to make sure that the paint will work properly, you can also use clear. But anyway, because I am, am using the chipboard letters and paper and whatever, I want to make sure that the paint will adhere to everything and it won't look different as it's going on different surfaces. So that's why I choose to use gesso. Another point is that your paint will actually go further because it will want to blend instead of soaking into your paper or whatever surface you're working on. So you'll actually use less paint, which is a bonus, and it will blend and go on and way nicer. So I love gesso. I recommend using gesso, but it is optional. It's totally up to you. Now I'm using the black and the white gesso, and I'm kind of blending, so I'm actually getting some gray. And that's just because I wanted to make it not be so stark between the black 
file folder and the background. Now I'm using some Stamperia rice paper and th these two th uh, insects, the butterfly and the bee, come from the poppy set. And I'm gluing it down with Dina Weekly Media Gel Medium. And I like to use gel medium when I'm doing anything that's really thin like deli paper, rice paper, tissue paper because it helps not only the piece of deli paper or what have you go down smoothly without a bunch of ripples but it also helps the background to sort of disappear, dissolve into your background instead of being a stark outline around your image. So now I'm going to be begin putting down a layer of paint on the background and this is all Dina Weekly Media acrylic paints and I have quite a few colors out on my craft sheet as you can see there. And I'm just going to use the same brush to do all this so the colors blend into each other. Now a note, I sort of wish I would have waited to put down the rice paper insects until after I did this background because I realized as I was painting along that I was covering up my images and then I had to take a baby wipe and wipe off the paint and then as you can see it creates like a halo around the insect so I'll end up adjusting this and and fixing it later but it would have probably just been easier to do the adhering it down in the step afterwards instead of doing it beforehand oh well I make it work in the end but I learned for next time to in this particular instance I would have waited but anyway back to this paint now I am using the same brush as I go from color to color and at, so far I've done all colors that will play nice to each, with each other pinks and oranges and yellows and here I am switching to green now on the color wheel green and red or green and pink don't always necessarily go together so I am getting kind of a weird color here but I'm not super worried about it because I'm going to do another layer and I do want it to blend and transfer from the warm colors to the cool colors so I'm just going to let that be for a little bit and I'll just adjust it in the next layer. Now I'm not cleaning my brush because I'm wanting to have different color values as I'm going from color to color so when I switch from you know the teal turquoise color to the blue color I'm not changing my brush and this is going to help me get even more color variation as the paints blend right on the brush and it also helps it blend and look more natural. So on the top of the page you can see I have a lot of warm colors and on the bottom I have a lot of cool colors. And I'm going not only on the background but I'm also brushing it onto the file folder. And on the bottom left corner I'm using green which actually worked out pretty good because green and yellow are next to each other on the color wheel and they will blend together. So. That worked out really nice that those colors um, went together. And it blends pretty good there, I think, right by that chipboard H. Now a note about painting around the chipboard letters. Because they are dimensional, they the brush doesn't really want to get into the grooves of the letters. So you have to kind of pounce your brush a little bit to get it into those grooves. As you can see here. And then smooth that out because it also wants to gather paint once you have it in there. So just kind of, after you make sure that you have it all the way to the edge, just use your brush to kind of smooth it out a little bit. So I'm introducing a little bit of hot pink to the bottom of the file folder. I'm wiping off the butterfly. I'm 
And I'm using my finger to sort of kind of blend in the background around it so it isn't so stark, but it didn't really work very well, so I'm going to have to address that in a minute. I'm just adding more and more layers. At this point, the top layers have started to dry, so it's easy to add a little more paint. Now, when paint is wet, it will blend into each other, and when paint is dry, it layers. So at this point, I'm now layering over the top of the paint I've previously put down instead of blending it, which is what I want because I'm going back and addressing areas where I, I don't really like what happened or I wanted to have a little more color variation and it got blended out too much. So I'm also adding some paint to the back of the file folder top. And this is uh, twofold because not only is it adding some color but it's also cleaning off my brush so as I'm just spot checking here and adding little bits of color I'm not getting too much paint on my brush. And now I'm using some Nouveau Crystal Drops, and this is the color of Dirty Bronze, and I'm putting these dots in between the letters, sort of filling in gaps. Now, I love Nouveau Crystal Drops, and the reason is, is because no matter how you squeeze them, they're self-leveling. And what's important about that is a lot of drops will create, if you don't smooth out the top right away, it'll create like sort of a Hershey's Kiss sort of shape where these crystal drops will smooth out so they'll be a perfectly rounded top so it takes some of the work out for you and you can make these drops any size and no matter what it will level out so now that I have everything down and it's all dried I'm beginning by using a water reactive pencil and I'm sort of just outlining where I want my quote to go And I'm doing this because I want to kind of, I'm blocking it out to make sure that everything is spaced the way I like it and I'll have enough room for my quote before I go in with my Posca paint pen. And this is the white Posca paint pen with the tip size of 5M, so it's a little bit wider. And now because I've already done the work and decided where everything's going to go, I can just outline with my paint pen. Because the water reactive pencil, if I didn't like something, I could erase it where once the paint pen's down, you are pretty much locked in. You, you're you stuck with what you got. So this helps me to make sure I don't make a mistake or I'm unhappy with something. So this quote says, don't look back, you're not going that way. And I decided to write the top part of the quote and then I'll finish out writing that way once everything is put in because I didn't want to smudge it with my hand because my hand is kind of resting where those words are going to go. So just to speed this along I'm just showing you how I'm widening the letters and adding that hand lettered brush stroke to it. I didn't, didn't leave the footage in of me actually writing the word because you understand what I'm doing here. So like I say, I'm just going through and I'm widening some of the strokes and then leaving the rest of them natural so it adds a little bit of character to my lettering.
And with that, our page is done. If you're interested in being a part of the Mix Me Inspired subscription kit, be sure to check out the description for links to learn more. And also, I'd love to see what you're creating. Please share on social media using hashtag MixMediaInspired.